Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to let you know I'm probably going to make a few goofs in this run through and if you want to know what they are, be sure to set your subtitles onto the Klingon channel. That's right, the Klingon channel where all of my mistakes will be dutifully recorded. Kapla! And now... Today, Rado runs through D-Day Dice, which is a very, very popular and long out of print cooperative dice game set on the beaches of Normandy in World War II. And I'm going to be showing you how this works today in a two-player run-through because at long last, it is on Kickstarter again. Uh, for people who have wanted to get their hands on this for years, uh, maybe because I originally put D-Day Dice in my top 10 gateway games, well, you finally got a chance. You can hit the I up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the Kickstarter page to learn more. But let's start storming the beaches. All right. Now, what I've got here is a demo set. So you got to bear in mind, this is not the final quality. Uh, the game's not going to come with just cheap paper printouts that you keep score on. And also, the game's going to come with a ton of custom dice. Now, I don't have that in this demo set. I've just got dice that just look like normal um, you know, six-siders. This, though, is a sample of what the final game looks like, where you can get soldiers, equipment, bravery, uh, or the dreaded skulls. This, you have to imagine, as I'm rolling my six dice in red, white, and blue, they should all be custom having these particular icons on them. So just bear that in mind. And um, I, I'm over here. I've got my starting six. Jen's got her starting six. We start out here on the entry sector. Also, these dice that represent our combat units that are going to try to work their way up the beach and capture the bunker, these are custom dice, too, that should show little um, military chevrons and stuff like that. So again, you'll have to imagine much cooler looking stuff. And again, you can look at the Kickstarter page to get an idea of what the final game looks like. But anyway, so I'm the white player. Jen is the blue player. We're both starting out here on the beach. and as part of setup because we're here this means we're, this is where we start each player gets four troops and I'm just going to use some extra dice I've got from another game to represent that I have no idea what the uh, resource tracking mechanism is for the game the original first edition of D-Day Dice came with little spinner doodads that you can keep track of everything. Maybe they're doing that again. Maybe they're doing something different. Right now, I'm just using a cheap printout and some dice to keep track of the fact that both Jen and I have four troops at the ready. But this is also where I'll keep track of how much equipment we've got, how much bravery we got, and how much rank we've got, how much star power we've got. And we're going to be rolling dice like crazy to get more and more as we go. All right, so... Everybody gets a nice little summary of how everything works. Here's a turn sequence. First, we roll the dice and re-roll up to two times. Very Yahtzee-ish. Then uh, we do upkeep, which is to say we uh, get the resources from our final dice results. Then we adjust unit markers uh, because we have to keep moving. We cannot stand still. And we use our unit markers, i.e. our unit dice, to keep track of how much longer we can stay where we are before we eventually have to move. Then we can recruit specialists, find items, trade resources, and draw awards, which is means we'll spend the resources we got off our dice to get all kind of benefits that will keep us alive. Finally, we have the option to move, and we got to move forward. You can never move back. You can also never move to a place that you've already been. Always moving forward. And finally, at the end of a round, there will be combat, which is kind of one-sided because it means this bunker is going to chew us up and tear us down, and then we'll go through it all again as we try to work our way up to eventually storm the bunker and win this cooperative scenario. So that's the situation, and let's get going. Like it says, first of all, we roll the dice, six dice. Each player has two reds, two whites, two blues. Two of them have to be locked, and then we can re-roll the west, uh, the ones that aren't locked, two more times, and then we have our final hand. So let's go on ahead. I'll roll. Wah! All righty, and let's say Jen rolls over here. Wah! All right. And now, each of us, and we can be, we're working in unison on this. Each of us has to work together and decide um, <clears throat> what we're going to stick with. Let's see. Now, this is interesting. Hmm. All right. Here's what I've got. Jen has got. All righty. So, like I said, the, remember, you have to remember, these aren't going to be dice with pips. They're going to be have all the little symbols indicating what they are. But for now, since I've got just these base ones, I have to use this. Uh, legend to translate. Ones are the worst thing. These are skulls. I do not want them. Both Jen and I ended up with a skull. And 
For every skull we've got, we've got to eliminate one of our other dice. So that's very bad. I don't think either Jen or I are going to lock a skull in because if we don't lock it in, we get to re-roll it and make that skull go away. Twos are stars. Let's see. So I've got one star. Jen's got two stars. You need stars to recruit specialists, um, officers, and you know, a colonel, a decoy, a captain, a lieutenant. These are the um, pool, the public ones that everybody can recruit. And then each of us has our hand of ones as well. Scout, sharp, super, corporal, minesweeper, veteran, hero, and medic. As you can see, they get more and more expensive the more powerful they are. You need more stars. That's what twos are. So Jen's got a couple of twos. She could get two stars. That means in her first round, if she goes on ahead and keeps those, she could recruit a scout, a sharpshooter, or a corporal. Um, by spending those stars she's earning. And again, remember, these would look like stars. Alrighty, so threes and fours are one or two soldiers. So, and we need soldiers. Soldiers are effectively our hit points. We each started with four because we're over here. And um, so if I take these threes, I could go from four to six soldiers. And Jen, she's got a four. A four is two soldiers. So Jen, each of us have two soldiers we can add to our unit right now if we leave those. A five is courage. We need courage to advance. To cross this first line, we need one courage. Then to cross this second line, we need two. And then three and then finally four courage and finally five courage so we need courage to keep on moving plus courage can be used to get medals uh, or awards and then finally six is tools tools the more of these we get the more um, it represents stuff we can find on the beach uh, a walkie-talkie a whistle mine detector grenade binoculars a field radio a flamethrower or uh, the Bangalore Bangalore torpedo B Bangalore torpedo right and the game, I should say, comes with a bunch of different scenarios and a bunch of different items and specialists. So every time you play, there's um, different variable things that you can add to make the same mission different or tons and tons of different di missions that you've got over the course of the game. So anyway, this is what we've got right now, and we've got to decide which two dice are we going to lock in that can't be re-rolled, and then Yahtzee style, we can re-roll the rest up to two more times to try to get the best thing. Now, like I said, I've explained what the six values are, but there's other stuff to consider as well because we can be shooting for red, white, and blue bonuses. If we can get any type of result in a red, white, and a blue, we get a super powered up version of that item. So like normally, you know, I mean the fours or, you know, the fours are double soldiers. So, um, you know, Jen, has got this four here, a red four, that's two soldiers. But if she can get a white and a blue four, in addition to getting um, you know, all the soldiers she'll get from them normally, she'll get a bonus of six additional soldiers. If she um, you know, gets three stars, in addition to earning three stars, she'll also get the bonus of adding one blue result to the final tally. So it's like she had a seventh die that could actually trigger other bonuses as well. So there's all these different red, white, and blues. And if I look around, I can see, well, now this is interesting. I've got a red, I'm sorry, a white and a blue three. If I could get a red three, and I didn't get them, but if I get a red three, then threes are a single soldier, I get reinforcements. In addition to getting the three soldiers, I will add five soldiers to my units and three soldiers to another player because this is a cooperative game. So I think maybe I want to go on ahead and lock these in. And then I'll have two chances to reroll these reds, and if I can get another three, boom, I'll get the red, white, and blue bonus. So that's really awesome. But the downside is if I don't get those, I've locked in two fairly weak dice. This is just two soldiers. Do I lock them in? Or now I don't have to lock them in. Now, one thing I know I'm not going to lock in, I'm not going to lock in that skull. I definitely want to reroll that. So um, maybe I want to hold on to this star um, because... <clears throat> Excuse me. I need the more stars I get, the better uh, recruits I can find. You know, the better specialists that will give us very cool, very important life-saving special powers. Hmm. Let's see here. But you know what? Even if I don't lock these both in, I don't have to re-roll them. I have to lock two dice, but then I can keep any other of dice held over. So even if I don't lock these in, I think I'm going to keep them. And I'm going to re-roll both of these. Now, I'm going to re-roll this because I'm trying to get a red three. I want to get rid of this white one, this skull. And hmm, a single star by itself doesn't let me do anything. Uh, 
So this, I mean, heck, I, right now I want more soldiers because at the end of the round, as long as we stay on this beach, every round we're going to lose three soldiers. And if I run out of soldiers, I die. And if either one of us, if either one of our units gets wiped out, everybody loses. So I think I will re-roll this and what the heck, I'll go for it. But if I don't get those threes, I've got two shots. So I'm rolling four times. So that's a reasonable chance. It's not a guaranteed chance. That's a reasonable shot at getting at least one more three. Or do I lock in this two and one of them and keep the other one around? Because um, if I, you know, if I, do, I mean, because then if I roll these and I get another two, hey, then I've got two stars. I can recruit a low-level specialist. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to lock these two in. They can't be rolled anymore. I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to re-roll these. Now, while I was thinking about mine, Jen was thinking about hers as well. And what has she got? Okay, she's got the same kind of situation. She's got, um, if she could get a white two which are stars, then Jen could get a red, white, and blue star bonusship, which is a, a leadership bonus. So does she go for these? You know what? I think she will lock these in because even if she doesn't get that third, it'd be nice to have two stars. So that's what she's locking in. She's going to reroll these, one, because she doesn't want to keep this skull, and two, she wants to get a white two so she can get the red, white, and blue bonus. Now as for this, I think even though she's not locking it in, she will, let's see, we don't need the, um, She's locking these in. She'll keep this one around anyway because this is a double soldier. And again, you need more soldiers. You need them pretty bad. So Jen's going to keep that. And she's going to reroll both of these. Does she keep that six or reroll it? Now, that is a tool. And the number of tools you roll, you check over here to see how many item points you get. One tool is worth one point. If you get two tools, that's three points. If you get four of your six dice are tools, 12. If all six of your dice are tools, that's 48. And you spend those points to buy the whistle that costs seven, or the field radio that costs 12, or the walkie-talkie that costs five, or what have you. Hmm, let's see. But a single tool by itself is not that exciting. I think Jen, at this point, would rather roll another four so she can get more soldiers and keep her life up. So we've, uh, we've both chosen. We've locked two. These can't change. We could reroll these, but we're setting them aside for now. And now we're going to reroll. I am desperate to see a red three. Show me a red three. Oh, that's not what I wanted to see. Jen, meanwhile, is desperate to see a white two. Show her a white two. No! Nuts! All right, well... That is not what we want, but now we're into the second round. And now we don't have to lock anything anymore. I could re-roll all these. Hey, I could re-roll these as well, or we can set some aside because we get one more roll. Now, I definitely don't want this skull, so that's going to get re-rolled totally. And what the heck, I will... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, right, right, right. So, do I... I mean, I'm rolling two more. I could go for that red three again... Or I could give up on it and bring this out as well, because maybe um, you know, I mean, if I only get two soldiers, that's not really great. Am I going to get another three? Now I'm going to reroll this. I'll probably reroll this. In which case, yeah, I'll leave this here. But it's kind of a gamble, because if I don't, well, it's still it's worth something. There there are no bad dice except for the ones, except for the skulls. And what do I want to do with this five? This five is a courage. I need a single courage to be able to move up, to cross this line, um, to start working my way up the beach. But here's the thing. I don't have to go up the beach until I've been here for four rounds. Every round I don't move up, the, uh, my unit counter counts up. It goes from one to two to three. And then finally, after three, after three rounds, the next round, it doesn't have a four. Instead, it has a little symbol that says you must move. So I'd have to move. And the thing is, as soon as I move up into these sectors, I'm taking six points of damage instead of three. The closer we get to the bunker, the more they're ripping us apart. So I want to stay on the beach as long as possible. So I don't think I need this one courage right now. If I were saving up for a lot of courage to be able to get an award, that would be worthwhile. But a single courage, I don't think so. I'm going to reroll that as well and hopefully get some more soldiers or some items or something like that. Um, and I got to decide. Do I re-roll this and hope for something better, or do I hope for the red three? I think I'll go for it. I'm, in, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do my final roll. Meanwhile, what is Jen's situation? She did not get the two she needed. Ah! Hmm. All righty. And she got a five and a four. Okay, so these are single soldiers. 
Jen is not excited about that. She's going to reroll both of these to once again try to go for that white star she needs to get the red, white, and blue bonus. We're both going for bonuses. A five is a courage. Just like me, a single courage, we don't need that courage right now. So I think she's going to reroll that as well to hopefully get some tools or some soldiers or something a bit more useful than courage. We don't need courage to step up until we've been on the beach for a while. All right, so that's it. So, we didn't change anything. We didn't pull these out. We didn't put anything aside. We're re-rolling all of them again. This is my last shot. Show me a red three. No! Dear. All right. And Jen says, show me a white two. No! Come on! All right. Well, that's it. These are locked in. We're done re-rolling. However, at least we can take some solace in the fact, no skulls, no ones, means all, we get to use all our dice. So. That was the first part of every round. Everybody is rolling their dice Yahtzee style three times. Now we do upkeep. And I, one thing I didn't say that we could have been going for was a straight. A one, two, three, four, five, and six. Or a uh, skull, soldier, double soldier, tool, blah, 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 blah. If we'd gotten a full straight, we would get the reward of each one of these dice as a single, plus we would get a medal. We would get an award over there. And I totally forgot um, to go for a straight. But straights are tough to go for. If somebody could recruit the lieutenant, that would make getting a straight a lot easier because then with the lieutenant on our side, um, he can use the radio to call in and let us swap dice. So a lieutenant would be a great thing to get, but I don't think either of us have enough stars for that. But anyway, here's what we got. Neither of us got a red, white, and blue bonus. Neither of us got the straight. So we um, go on ahead, and if you, if you have any skulls, for every skull we've got, we've got a set aside one die that didn't do anything. Neither of us have any skulls. Now um, we record all the resources we did manage to get. All right, so I got a two, which is a star. So I've got one star, which is not enough to recruit anybody. Um, let's see, I've got two soldiers. So I go from four to six soldiers, because remember, threes are a single soldier. And oh my gosh, I having to constantly check back and forth. It may seem really onerous, but remember, the real game, you've got the, the real dice, so it's easy to at a glance make all these decisions and keep track of what you've got. So anyway, there's two soldiers. Uh, five is one courage. I didn't need it, but I ended up getting it anyway. And there's one courage I've got. And two sixes, which are tools. Two tools means I earned three item points, which is not enough to buy anything. But hey, I'm starting to save up. All right, so that's what I ended up getting. What did Jen get? She got two twos, which is two stars. She got, um, uh, let's see, so she also got two soldiers off of that double, so she went up to six soldiers. Um, she got two fives, which is two courage. Okay, so heck, maybe over time she'll start saving up that courage. Because once she gets to six, she can trade in for an award. And finally, she got a single tool, which is only one item point. Not that exciting. So there we go. Um, that is what that is the uh, upkeep. We record all the resources from our re on our resource card. And again, like I said, I don't know for the final version if you're actually if they're going to do pads of paper and everybody writes down, or or if they go with the original spinner box, whatever it might be. But uh, now we adjust unit markers. All of our units go from one to two. If, I, if we were at three or four, if we were at four, we don't go to a five. Instead, that means we got to move. So time is passing. Time is ticking. Uh, we've still got some more time on the beach before we're required to move up. Then we can start recruiting stuff. So what do I have? I've got three tools. The cheapest tool I could get is a walkie-talkie, which is five. So that's not doing any good. Jen has even fewer tools than me. So we're not going to do any of that. I've got one star. That's not a to recruit. But Jen has two stars. Oh, now I should say one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. This is a cooperative game. Because we are in the same location, we can swap and trade resources however we want. So I could go on ahead and give Jen my star so that I would have none and Jen would have three. That means, oh, if we just had one more, we could combine our stuff and get the lieutenant, which means then... Um, not only can we trade resources like we always can, but we could trade dice at the end of a roll. You know, the, ooh, that would be awesome. Um, and by the same token, Jen could give me another tool. So I go from three to four, but that's still not enough. I still need five to be able to buy something. We could swap courage. Um, you know, I could give this to Jen so she could start saving up to get an award. You know, or we can just leave it alone. Um, let's see here. Jen, do, Jen does have two, which means she could recruit the decoy 
or which is you know in the, in the common pool, or the scout, the sharpshooter, or the corporal. Now, the scout means um, as long as you have the scout on your side, after you're done rolling your dice, it's as if you have a seventh die that is that resulted in a tool. It's colorless, so it cannot apply towards the red, white, and blue bonus, um, but it could get you one step higher, or will get you one step higher on the big tool, so you could start buying better stuff. So Jen could get the scout. She could recruit the sharpshooter, which means after you're all done rolling, if you've got skulls, you can eliminate one skull to protect one of your result dice. So that's pretty cool. Or Jen could get the corporal, which would let her re-roll one die after she's done with all her rolling. Um, but of course, she cannot re-roll a lock die. So, I mean, heck, if she'd had one more shot at it, would she have gotten the three? She oh, no, she needed a two. Didn't matter. Um, but so that gives her a seventh roll if she's got the corporal. So, does Jen want to recruit one of those? Or, again, if I give Jen the one star I've got, which doesn't do me any good, Jen could afford to go up to a minesweeper to avoid landmines. You'll notice, to cross from here to here, you've got to go through landmines, which will really do a lot of damage. How much? a random amount. You roll one of these dice, it could be one damage, it could be six damage when you cross through a mine. But, of course, if you have a minesweeper, you ignore the landmines. Or she could get a veteran. Uh, everyone's, uh, gain one soldier for every red, white, and blue. So if you get a lot of red, white, and blues, they become even more valuable. Or a hero. Spend your courage or stars to save soldiers. When you take damage um, and you're going to lose soldiers, you could lose courage or stars instead because you've got a hero on your team. So Jen could recruit one of those or if we don't recruit anything, next turn, if either of us gets one more star, we can combine and get the lieutenant, and that means we can start sharing our, our, um, our, those results too. So I don't think Jen is going to recruit. I'm not, I can't recruit. So I think that's it. During the recruit specialist, find items, trade resources, and draw awards. Um, we're doing none of those things. We're saving up for another round. And now we have the option to move. Uh, we're both here. If we, if we had courage, we could spend it to move here or here. But then that means we'd be you know, out of the frying pan and into the fire. Another interesting thing, you'll notice the uh, shields that show you how much damage you're going to take every round. Um, you know, these are bad. This one's not so bad. It's a four. But they're also black or white. White means you can stay until you eventually run out of time. Black means you must immediately move on. So as soon as we move here, next round we must move forward, which means we must have the courage to do it. Now is not a good time to move forward. We're just going to wait uh, so we can build up our resources, get some more, you know, find some more officers and some specialists on the beach or get some more equipment on the beach before we move into more dangerous areas. So we're not moving because our time hasn't run out. And now finally, combat. Everybody takes three points of damage. So I'm at six. I go down to three. Jen's at six. She goes down to three. We started with four. Now we're down to three. Um, next round, we'll take three more points of damage, which means we'll die if we don't find some more soldiers on this beach. Yikes! So not the most exciting first round. But if we could have gotten those red, white, and blue bonuses, it would have been pretty exciting. But um, you know what? Uh, I think, folks, that just is a quick introduction to the game. Gives you an idea of how it plays. Now, if you want to watch some more, you want to watch me get off this beach and start working my way towards the bunker and deal with specific specialist requirements, deal with landmines, and also deal with machine gun nests, well, you can go on ahead and hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, or instead you can go straight to Final Thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two,